Father, we come to you tonight with one purpose, to worship you, to worship you in song and praise, to worship you with our hearts and with our lives, because we know that we have been created by you with good plans in mind, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us a hope and a future. Father, we give you our worship tonight because you say that when we ask, it will be given. And when we seek, it will be found. And when we knock, the doors will open wide. So open wide the gates of heaven, O Lord. Open wide the gates of heaven and let your presence fall. Breaking through all the lies 
with the truth that's right hear the sound of the wind let the roar of heaven begin right here I think you guys are happy to be here tonight. I'm happy to be here tonight for so many reasons. Um, we've got a great service that's planned in so many different aspects and elements of it where God has an opportunity to work. And uh, I'm going to invite you to have a seat. And uh, I just wanted to share with you there's a thread that kind of runs through tonight. And it's this idea that all of us have a calling, that all of us have been called by God to use the gifts and talents and passions and abilities that he has given us to make a difference in the world and advance the kingdom and live out our purpose, the reason why we're on this planet, all of that. Every single one of us has a calling. But there is this unique calling that's in scripture of uh, pastor, teacher, pastor, teacher. 
that um, is about it's about spiritual authority it's about oversight in the local church it's this unique this unique calling that God has given some within the body and acknowledging that calling um, we do through a process that we call ordination in the church and uh, we are going to have an ordination service tonight as part of this celebration we're going to ordain Milad Nassar who is the founding pastor of a church plant in southern Lebanon and some of you know about this church because we've talked about this church it was started by Heart for Lebanon amazing organization that we are connected to this church through you has supported this new church this church plant Milad's church uh, since its beginning and uh, we're going to celebrate God's calling upon Milad's life tonight which is just very very cool and not only is Milad here, but uh, Camille Melki, the founder and CEO of Heart for Lebanon, his daughter Amy, uh, Jose, a uh, friend, is also here, and Tom Atima, co-founder of Heart for Lebanon. All of them, what a blessing, all of them are here tonight. And... Uh, I know you've already clapped, but I want them to stand so you can see them and uh, welcome them again. Okay, I want to just share a few verses that speak into this calling that's on Milad's life before we bring him up. Uh, the first is from uh, the book of Ephesians that we're studying uh, in our weekend, a series that we're doing now. And it speaks to this whole issue of that there's all of these gifts within the body that we have been given, that God has given us. And it says in Ephesians 4, I think we've got the text, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some to be pastors, and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ Ephesians 4 so all of us have been called but there are these unique callings of pastor and teacher and then in 1 Peter, Peter is writing to the church in Rome and he's addressing this issue of what does it look like to be a spiritual leader because oftentimes with spiritual leadership and authority, spiritual authority, it's so easy to abuse it and to uh, take advantage of the authority that you have been given to lead. And Peter addresses that directly in the letter that he writes to the church at Rome. And this is what he says, to the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not greedy, not for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Those are powerful, powerful words of what it means. And then there's one other passage I want to share with you that talks about anointing. You know, when um, the Bible talks about anointing, it is always talking about the power and the presence of God at work through his Holy Spirit, always. 
in the New Testament in James that power and presence of God is reflected in God's healing that he oftentimes does within our bodies and in James we're told to if we're sick bring the elders of the church have them pray for you anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith and God will work within your midst but most of the time in the Bible anointing doesn't have to do with healing it has to do with the power and presence of God that is required when you lead when you are entrusted with authority and that's why in the Old Testament all of the kings were always anointed because if you're going to be a king and you're going to lead you need the power and presence of God to make wise decisions and good decisions and act justly and not abuse your power and so all the kings were always anointed and David who was one of the kings was anointed and David so desperately needed the power and presence of God's spirit at work in his life because he sometimes made decisions that were really really foolish and when Samuel was instructed by God that David was the man this is what we're told rise and anoint him God says he is the one so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers and from that day on the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power from that day on the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power now we're going to bring um, Milad up and uh, I want you to get to know him just a little bit better but before he comes up we have a little video that gives you a little context of his ministry which is very very unique so take a look at this we have a church on Sunday worship gathering on Sunday more than 150 families are coming in a regular basis every Sunday to worship together. Their kids are in our Sunday school. The men, the women, the Muslims, the people, uh, the ladies from a Muslim background, the elderly from Muslim backgrounds, from a Kurdish background, from Arab Muslim background, all of them unity together, side by side, are worshiping God. Talking about like uh, 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 the love of the Christ, sharing their passion with with other uh, with other family members, encouraging them to come to join them, to be part of what. God is doing among them and what God how God was good and is good in their life I am the living example about how Jesus healed me how Jesus changed my life how Jesus changed my attitude changed all my entire life before I became a believer I used to be a fighter and I may be I might die for for trash but now when I become a believer if I die I will die for the cross I will die for a very valuable uh, reason thank you God for allowing me to serve to be obedient and serve among the poor Muslim people to show them love as you showed me when I became a believer 12 years ago would you welcome Milad Nassar So Milad, I know you, and I know that's pretty overwhelming, uh, but you are among family here, people that have journeyed with you from afar for a long time. Um, I wanted to just ask you a couple of questions before we anoint you uh, today and pray for you. Uh, one is just, um, when did you sense your calling to pastoral ministry? Was there something that... Um, was unique about the way in which God 
called you. Yeah. First of all, what a privilege to be in Fairfax uh, a Church. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for allowing me to be with you today. Uh, thank you, Rod, for, for, for having me here. Uh, first time I get baptized in the Mediterranean Sea, I have this vision about thousands of people from Muslim backgrounds are coming to Christ. And since that time, I felt like God. This is my call. This is what I'm, go I'm, I'm going to do. I'm going to plant a church. I'm going to lead my people to Christ. I'm living, I'm living in, a, in a broken world. Like I'm living in a place where there's always uh, military conflicts, where there's always their wars and military battles. But I promise God I'm, I'm going to lead my people to Christ. I'm going to lead them to hope. I'm going to make difference in their life. And I promised God since first day, uh, I'm going to, to put a smile in the face of, it, of every child from my community. And I promised him that I'm going to, to protect my authority and I'm going like to, to, to protect my people from my authority and I will uh, be just a servant, having a servant heart, like uh, uh, committed to serve my people in a dedication way and to look always at them as valuable, not as numbers, as many of the political groups there look at them. And I promise God to be just like, you know, a follower of him and he died for me and I'm going to live for him. Yeah, amen. Now, I know you face some unique challenges in the setting in which you are. What are some of the challenges that you're facing? Yeah, there's, uh, there's two challenges I'm going to talk about. First of all, like we've been used, we used to live in a, a community where they, like, you know, a big atmosphere of freedom. Unfortunately, it seems like, you know, the situation is shifting right now. And there's a lot of like, you know, a persecution in that part of the world. And it seems like, you know, uh, uh, because of the financial uh, collapse and because of the uh, 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 of COVID and and many. Uh, uh, uh uh, the economy is broken right now there. It seems there's a lot of poor people around us and it's difficult sometimes to tell someone, no, I don't want to, to help you. In fact, like since the first day, we opened our door to receive every part, every person from our community. Doesn't matter which ethnics or background he is, Kurds, Bedouin, Gypsy, Arab Lebanese, uh, 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 Christian Lebanese, uh, Arab Syrian, uh, Kormanji, Sorani, Murshidi. So, so, so uh, it's kind of there's a lot of poor uh, people and everyone is coming asking for help and it's difficult to tell him um, uh, for, uh, forgive me we don't have resources so to manage resources uh, 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 with limited uh, resources it is it is difficult because I used uh, uh, to be obedient to God's call and to to serve my people so yeah. it's tough yeah Malad, we are so excited about God's calling upon your life and so thankful that we get to be a part of this and I'm gonna invite our pastors to come up and Camille and Tom to come up and we're just gonna lay hands on you and anoint you and uh, pray God's calling upon your Thank on you. your life. Thank yeah. You. Lord, I anoint you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God, we surround this man that you have called. And when we think about the unique narrative that you have crafted to bring him to this point. It is nothing short of a miracle. The transformation that you did in his own life, the trajectory of where he was headed and what happened when Jesus Christ came into his life, the transformation he has experienced from a background that was so very different and the way in which you have used him in unique ways already to bring people to faith in Jesus Christ, to baptize 
people from all different kinds of religious backgrounds to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, to see lives raised to life in Christ. We are so thankful for what you are doing and what you have done in Milad's life. But now, Lord, as we stand here surrounded by pastors and surrounded by the church, surrounded by all who are called, we pray now, Lord, that you would bless his life and the direction of his life in ways that are unfathomable and beyond imagination. We pray for your divine ordination upon his calling. We pray that you would continue to reinforce when he goes through the most difficult of times, that you would reinforce this calling that you have laid upon his life. That he would be reminded even of this moment, surrounded by the body of Christ. Be reminded of this concrete moment where you have said, yes, I have called you, Milad, for this unique purpose. And Lord, we are so thankful to be a part of it. And so we pray your blessing upon him as he goes forth ordained in the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ, our Lord and our Savior, we pray. And everyone said, amen. 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 and praise our God for what he's done, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. So we sing this together. See on the hill of Calvary, my Savior lived for me, my Jesus. And look at the wounds that give me life, grace flowing from him. No greater sacrifice What he's done 
for being here. Um, that idea really sparked this whole service. The fact that every single one of us is called. Every single one of us, God has already written a whole story for, and it's beautiful. And it ends in redemption, and it ends in the cross. Wow. And maybe for you, you're like, wow, that was amazing, but I don't really know what that means for me. I'm not a pastor. Or wow, all of the things that I lack, all of the things that disqualify me, we start to think about us, right? When we think about our calling, but really what we need to be thinking about is pointing our minds and our hearts and our souls to the one who gives that calling, the one who can work with anything, the one who sees you and sees his child. It's not about you. It's about what God can do through you. So I just wanna read this together before we keep going, just as a pause, just for anything that's in your heart right now, just some soothing words about who God is, because who God is and knowing that and believing that, it changes everything. If God is who he really says that he is, he is worthy of it all. He's worthy of the little thing that you can give him because he is faithful to his promises. So let's read this together. And I wanna invite you to just have a posture of openness. If you could just open your hands, just open your hands to receive this word from the Lord. I wanna invite you to just, if there's something that's just tugging at your heart, that you would hold on to that. And during this next song that you would just let God just reveal to you what he has for you in that. So I'm gonna read this from Psalm 103. It says, let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. And may I never forget the good things that he does for me. He forgives all my sins, all of them. And he heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things and my youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. For his unfailing love, his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. Praise the Lord, everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom, let all that I am praise the Lord. Father, that is our prayer tonight. 
Let everything that we are praise the Lord. Let the good and the bad, let the strong and the weak, let everything that I am praise the Lord. Let's worship him and his promises and who he is. We can count on him wherever you are. Let's sing this together. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenants, of faithful promises. Thank you. And time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you said. No, the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And then my heart will when you speak a word, it will come to pass. The great faithful. So good. Let the heavens hear you. From the rising I will praise Hallelujah Great is your faithfulness to me
great is thy faithfulness.
Jesus. Can we just take a minute? Can we just pause for a second? You all we want, Jesus. You all we want, Jesus. Oh, and we sit here in your presence, in the goodness, in the mercy of the Lord. going to close out tonight with songs of testimony that bear witness to what God has done. All of us, all of us, all of us have a testimony. All of us have a testimony. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have a testimony. A testimony is not what God will do, it's what God has done in our lives. And uh, we have different kinds of testimony. Sometimes we have testimonies that we don't think are testimonies. Sometimes we have testimonies of God's protection for us that protects us from the awful, whatever the awful is, that intercedes and intervenes and protects us from the awful. And uh, Don and I have lots of testimonies as we raised our kids. And you probably have testimonies of where God protected you or protected people that you love from the awful. Whatever the awful was, whatever it was that could have happened did not happen because of God's intervening power. I'm walking out one of those testimonies right now. God is in the midst of protecting me from the awfulness of cancer. And he is, he is in the midst of healing my body. And those are, those are wonderful testimonies. We, we have to share those testimonies. We, we have to bear witness to those. But sometimes we have other testimonies. Not every testimony is about God protecting us from the awful. Sometimes our testimonies are about the sufficiency of God's grace and the sufficiency of God's peace and the sufficiency of God's presence in the midst of the awful. And I have lots of testimonies of those as well. And you probably have lots of testimonies of those as well. And it's so important because this side of heaven, we will at times go through the awful. There is no promise that God gives even his children that in this broken, sinful world that at times we may go through the awful. And we've been reminded of that so profoundly in the last couple of weeks with the shooting in Buffalo, New York and the school shooting just yesterday in Texas. Lives ripped apart, families ripped apart. Awfulness, 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 awfulness. 
But God is not, folks, God is not absent in the awful. God is present in the awful. That sometimes we may find it harder to see him, but he is present in the awful. And so tonight as we sing these songs of testimony and songs of God's power and his presence and his grace and what he's done and what he can do and all of that, I want you to think about your testimony. Testimonies of where God has protected you from the awful testimonies of where God has been sufficient. His grace has been sufficient for you in the midst of the awful. And maybe as you do that, also praying for people that you know, whether you know them personally or whether you know them because of a news report that you have heard, who are going through the midst of something awful and need to experience the presence of God so that they too can come out with a testimony of God's power and his grace in the midst of this. God, we are so thankful. We bear witness in this moment and through these songs, we bear witness to what you can do, your power, your unlimited grace, We bear witness that you are the one who gives every single one of us a testimony. And we celebrate that in this moment tonight. In the name of Christ, we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Let's celebrate the goodness of God.
I see. 
forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters from my beliefs. Oh, yeah.
You all have one. You have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Testimony. 
Alright, come on, sing it out. Cause for tonight. <laughs> you know, if something, if God spoke to you tonight, or if there's something that was inside you that you just want to join hands with someone and have them pray with you, we have an incredible prayer team down here. They will be down here. And they're going to pray with you. And it's not a weird thing. It's just another person believing with you that you are going to see the miracle or you are going to see the peace that you've been wanting. Amen. Okay, well, we love you, and we will see you Sunday. This energy, this praise. Don't just leave it here. Bring it back on Sunday. Amen. And we love you.